What's up, everything people? Let's start with 30 seconds of silence, just to be still and silent before the Lord. Set timer for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Count Let's go. Down. All right, into the book. Today we're gonna to be reading from Acts 9, 1 through 6, and 15 through 16. It says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Now this is Saul, not from the Old Testament, from the New Testament. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or, or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now, get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is, cho is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings to the people of Israel. Okay. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. I'm not laughing at the passage. I'm laughing at my reading. All right, so the devotional says Saul's great conversation, or Saul's great conversion, woo, and life as an apostle can only be understood by looking at his entire life and training. I'm going to start over. Saul's great conversion and life as an apostle can only be understood by looking at his entire life and training leading up to this famous passage in Acts 9. Soren Kierkegaard once observed that life is lived forward, but only understood backward. This was certainly Alexander Solzhenitsyn's experience. Solzhenitsyn is considered by many to be the greatest Russian writer of the 20th century, but his sense of calling was not always clear. His purpose grew in his experiences of the Gulag, the Soviet concentration camps, a place where he experienced a deadly struggle to write, a miracle of a cure from cancer, a conversion through a Jewish follower of Jesus, and a deepening burden to put the dying wish of millions on record. He wrote, the one worry, worrying thing was that I might not be given time to carry out the whole scheme. I felt as though I was about to fill a space in the world that was meant for me and had long awaited me, a mold, as it were, made for me alone, but discerned by me only this very moment. I was a molten substance, impatient, unendurably impatient, to pour into my mold, to fill it full, without air bubbles or cracks before I cooled and stiffened. Later, the true significance of what happened would inev inevitably become clear to me, and I would be numb with surprise. Hmm. So what space in the world for which your past has prepared you is waiting to be filled by you? All right, guys. I'll see you on the next Daily Breaths. I love you all. Goodbye.